All right, uh, unit one is in the books, so uh, on to unit two, trigonometry. Uh, trigonometry for most of you will probably be a new thing. Uh, trigonometry is basically the study of uh, angles inside of triangles. Um, I believe the origins of trigonometry come from astronomy when they were looking at uh, kind of the relationships between stars in the sky and the appropriate triangles that they made. All right, so in this first lesson we're going to look at the uh, using the tangent ratio. So there's three different ratios we'll look at. The tangent ratio, sine ratio, cosine ratio. Uh, today just the tangent ratio to calculate angles and lengths. So rather than just physically measuring uh, angles and lengths using a protractor or a uh, ruler, um, we're going to be able to use uh, trigonometry to assist us. All right. this, the first part of this lesson is this uh, constructing your understanding that I'd like you to complete. Um, you might want to do this with a partner. So this is going to take you all the way down to here. If you need some help while you're doing it, um, look on page 71 or uh, ask me or some of your colleagues. Then you're going to answer these two questions right here. All right. Um, so you can pause the video now and go ahead and do that. All right, so I'm assuming that you have done that much. Uh, so now let's jump into the tangent ratio. Hopefully you learned a little bit about the tangent ratio um, right there. So the tangent ratio, if angle A is an acute angle, and so acute angle, I hope we understand what that means, just means the angle is less than uh, 90 degrees, uh, in a right triangle, then what we can say is the tangent of some angle A is equal to the length of the opposite side over the length of the adjacent side. So, if this is my reference angle here, we're going to often call whatever angle I'm talking to your reference angle, we would say that the side that is as far away from it as you can is going to be the opposite side, and the side that is um, kind of beside it is going to be the adjacent side. And just for kicks, even though we're not going to necessarily use it in this uh, lesson, the side that's always opposite of this 90 degree angle is going to be called our hypotenuse. That never changes, all right? And why I said that this never changes is, let's just pretend that angle C is the angle that we're worried about, all right? And then this means that this angle over here, or sorry, this side over here is going to be your opposite side, and this side would be your adjacent side, all right? So things can kind of switch up. So we'll do some examples like that in a second so you can see how that works. All right, so let's, uh, let's jump into this. The value of the tangent ratio is usually expressed as a decimal that compares the lengths of the sides together. All right, so for instance, if 10 of A is equal to 1.5, then what it means is in any similar right triangle with angle A, the side of, sorry, the length of the side opposite angle A is 1.5 times the length of the side adjacent. All right. So we're always saying that whatever's on top right here, whatever that ratio is, that's going to be what the relationship is to the adjacent side. All right. So I kind of give you a little bit of an idea here. Um, let's say we're talking about angle A, and we found out that the tangent ratio of angle A was 1.5. That means that we don't know what this side necessarily is, BC here, but we know that it's 1.5 times as big as this side down here. So for instance, if um, we know that this side right here is 2, then you would just take 2, multiply it by 1.5, and you would find out that this side is 3. That could be a possibility. I'm not saying that that's always the way. All right. uh, vice versa, if I said that that side is 3 over here, we would divide 3 by 1.5, and you could find out that that side was 2. All right, let's go to the next page. So. You're definitely going to need your scientific calculator for this. All right, there are ways of doing trigonometry without using a calculator, using a uh, table. Um, in this course, though, we're going to be using our scientific calculators. All right, um, so you can use your scientific calculator to determine unknown angle measures. The button you will need to use looks like this. It is the tangent inverse button. Okay, so it has a tan and a little negative one, but it's read as the tangent. All right, so let's try some examples with um, this triangle we have over here on the side, uh, x, y, z. So the first thing it asks you to do is determine what tangent of x is. So when I ask for tangent of x, what I'm actually, a actually asking for is, what is the ratio? Okay. So for instance, what you do is go and locate angle x. Well, I'll locate it right here. That's usually what we do is we just try a little line like that to denote that that's your reference angle. Now, remember what tangent is. Tangent is your opposite, 
whatever your opposite side is over your adjacent side. So let's go and find what our opposite side is. Well, in relation to this angle, 6 would be my opposite and 12 would be my adjacent. It's just that easy. All right? So what we do now is we can just simplify this as a fraction. We would say the relationship of tangent of that angle is 1 to 2. So what this really means, folks, is that the opposite side is going to be half as big as the adjacent side in this type of a triangle. All right, let's try another one. How about we do, do the tan of z? Well, this time, it's still going to be equal to opposite over adjacent, but if this is the angle I'm looking after, well, now this is my opposite side. So I would have this as equal to 12 over this being my adjacent 6. So we have 12 over 6 is equal to 2. What this means now is that the opposite side, 12, is twice as big as the adjacent side, 6. Right. Now, this is going to be the more likely type of question you're going to get. I'm going to actually ask you, what is that angle right here? All right. And so in the past, you would take out your little protractor and you would try your best to estimate that. But now what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to find exactly what that is. You can probably imagine that this is a lot of bearing on construction. Um, I was very surprised when I uh, was talking to some of my construction buddies and they said that uh, they have a calculator in the tool belt and they're often doing trigonometry. All right, so this is definitely um, not one of those math things where it has no purpose. Trigonometry definitely has a purpose. All right. So uh, angle x, we would say angle x is equal to the tangent inverse. All right. And now we just put in that ratio that we had, the tangent inverse of, so we're looking at angle x. We have my opposite side, 6 over 12. Now you'll see the notation that I did there. I did 6 slash 12. The reason I did that is I'll show you on my calculator. That's how it's actually going to look. All right. So we'll try to access this on our calculator. What you're going to hit is you're going to try to get into this tan to the negative 1. So we're going to go tan to the negative 1. And you're going to go 6 divided by 12. And you're going to see what's going to happen here is I'm probably going to get something crazy. Yeah, I did. All right. This should not have happened. Likely, if you guys tried this on your own, that exact same thing would happen. I would like you to try that on your own actually right now if you can. Um, we didn't want to get that as an answer. All right. What you need to always make sure is when you're in the trigonometry unit, and you might want to make note of this on your little page, is that you need to be in a special mode. Okay. The mode is going to be called degree mode. So for my calculator, I'm going to come down here and put it in degree mode, and now I'm off to the races. But for some of you, it might, on the top of your little calculator screen right here, there might either be a D or an R. If you see a D, then you're good to go. If you see an R, then you're going to have to play around with your settings and try and change it so we're in degree mode. If you need help, let me know. All right. Sometimes it's tough for uh, students to, to navigate that. So now we're going to try it again. Second, inverse. So we're now we're dealing with the tangent inverse. We go 6. Divided by 12, with a little bit of luck here, we have something that makes a little bit more sense. Okay, what we found out is we found out that that angle X, that mystery angle, is 26.56 dot, 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 degrees. We're going to round it to the nearest degree and say that that's equal to approximately 27 degrees. Okay, let's try it for Z. Well, Z, if you recall, was just the opposite ratio, so we have tangent inverse of. 12 over 6, and if you think about it, we should be able to predict what this angle is going to be. Since we know that this angle was 90, that one's 27, and that one should be 63, so it adds up to 180 degrees. So I'm going to write that right in, and we're just going to test it. So let's go up to, here, to our calculator. Now it's not going to be exactly 63 degrees because we've done some rounding, but we should be getting pretty close. And lo and behold, we do. All right, so that would round down to 63 degrees. All right, example two. Um, word problems you're going to see are, are fairly common in this unit. The reason is is we're dealing with uh, real world type of issues um, and, tr and trigonometry can help solve them so uh, you're going to have to get used to these. A support cable is anchored to the ground 5 meters from the base of a telephone pole. The cable is 19 meters long. It is attached near the top of the pole. What angle to the nearest degree does the cable make with the ground? So. Here's my sweet, sweet drawing. Let's say we have our telephone pole, lovely. Uh, what do they kind of look? Something like this. Got some little doodads in between them. Well, let's say that we have a red cable wire. Okay, so we have a cable wire like so. Come on. Okay. And it makes a triangle right here, 90 degree triangle. All right, 
fantastic diagram. What do we know about it? Well, they tell you it's 5 meters from the base. Good. And they tell you this crazy cable is 19 uh, meters long. So we label all that. They want, what is the angle to nearest degree does the cable make with the ground? So this is going to be the angle that we're looking at right here. Okay. Now normally when we're dealing with an unknown angle, when a triangle is not labeled like this, we'll call it theta. Theta is just kind of like a, a zero with a, a line through it. All right. So here's the crazy thing, though. If you remember, the tangent ratio says that we have to have the opposite and adjacent. Well, the opposite side would be over here. And the adjacent side is over here. Well, that's kind of a problem. We need to figure out what the opposite is. Well, in this case, what we're going to have to do is do a little bit of work. So I'll write you guys a little note. We do not know, should all be writing this down, the side adjacent to theta, so we must use our good friend Pythagoras. All right, so we got to deal with Pythagoras here, so let's give it a try. We have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember, c squared has got to be your hypotenuse, so 19 has got to go in there. And uh, it doesn't make any difference here. I'll just call my offset a. And we have plus 5 squared, like so. So we have a squared plus 25 is equal to 19 squared is 361. And if we subtract 25 from both sides, we get 336. So, and if we want to get a, we need to take the square root of that. So we have a is equal to the square root of 336. So now we know that this side is actually root 336. You're going to see I'm not going to simplify that for right now. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use trigonometry. So we can say now that we know that tangent of theta is equal to my opposite side over my adjacent side. Maybe we can start substituting in. We know that the opposite side is root 336, and this is how I'd like you to do a question like this, all over my adjacent side, 5. All right. Now, when you get to this stage, I don't want to know what tan of theta is. For instance, I don't want to just know like what I did up here, what that ratio was. That's not what we're dealing with here. I want to actually know what the angle is. So we go one step further, and we say theta now is equal to the tangent inverse of root 336 all divided by 5. Right. We chuck that into our calculator and we see what we get. I'll wake the beast here, there we go. Tangent inverse of the square root of 336 divided by 5, close up those brackets, equals 74.74 degrees. We'll round to the nearest degree here and say that it is 75 degrees. All right. So that seems somewhat realistic. Um, the diagram is maybe not uh, that good. If you're looking at 75 degrees, the angle probably should be a little bit more down here. But of course, that was just a sketch. That's your final answer. Okay, so so far we've just used trigonometry to look at angles. Well, trigonometry is also useful to find side lengths. Let's turn the page, and that's what we're going to get into here. So we can also use the tangent ratio. to calculate the lengths of unknown legs. A leg is a side of a triangle that we do not know. Okay, so we sometimes will refer to them as legs. Um, to do this, we use indirect measurement to calculate missing lengths instead of using direct measurement. Direct would be actually physically going and measuring it with like a, a ruler, let's say. Indirect measurements are useful when the lengths we are trying to determine are very, very large. All right, and it could be actually even the opposite. When they're very, very small, it's tough to measure and get an accurate reading. Obviously, when they're very large, um, that's going to be a problem, too. Um, I also want to show you this little um, uh, rectangle I made right here. It is often convenient to use lowercase letters to make, uh, or to name the side opposite a vertex of a triangle. So what I mean here is, let's say we started off with these angles, A, B, C, like those. Well, in order to denote the sides, what we'll do is the sides are always going to be across. So that's A, that's little b, and little c. All right, so you might find that useful. Um, the textbook often does that. Sometimes we won't, but you'll see. 
Anyways, determine the length of x, y, 